Welcome to the UEA Catholic Society podcast. This is Donna Nobis Pachem, episode 2. I'm your host, Jamie. Before we go any further in this episode, I'd like to make something clear. In these episodes, I plan to talk about the Catholic faith. While I do try to make this content as accurate and theologically sound as possible, I may sometimes make a mistake here and there. I'm just a young lay Catholic, and only human. I'm very much a fallible being. That being said, I do hope these episodes are informative and help people understand Catholicism a little better. God willing, that will be the case. Anyway, on to the contents of this episode. Last episode we talked about God and the Trinity, so for me it makes sense to now talk about the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, specifically. Rather ironically, you can't really speak about Jesus specifically without also speaking about God. Catholics believe that Jesus is God incarnate. That means that in Jesus, God became one of us, a human being. As the Gospel of John puts it in chapter 1 verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That isn't to say that he then lost his divine nature, or that it was diminished in any way. Jesus has a divine nature and a human nature. He assumed this human nature at the time of the Incarnation, the moment he was conceived. The two natures then existed within the singular person of Jesus in union. This duality, this non-conflicting coexistence of two natures in one person, divine and human, is sometimes referred to as the hypostatic union. Jesus is referred to as the Son of God, partly because like us he has a father. We have our earthly fathers, Jesus has his heavenly Father. The difference is that Jesus is eternally begotten of his Father, which means that Jesus has always existed, unlike us whose fathers existed before we did. There was a point in time when we did not exist, but Jesus, being God, always has been. This all feeds back into the mystery of the Trinity, so if you haven't listened to episode 1, I would recommend it as it might help. Now, Jesus being both 100% God and 100% man means that he provides an essential point in which to grow in our relationship with God. Being a man, the perfect man, essentially what Adam could have been, Jesus can help us understand more about our own God-given humanity. The way in which he bore his suffering serves as an example which we must follow in our own lives as Christians. Whatever trials you might be undergoing, trivial or momentous, Jesus has been there too. Which is also quite interesting when you think about it. If Jesus worked as a carpenter for a lot of his life, then I suppose it's reasonable to assume he knew what it was like to get a splinter in your finger. (laughs) Could you imagine the audacity of that little shard of wood? Honestly, just for a moment, imagine that situation. A tiny little splinter sticks itself into the Son of God's finger. To allow himself to experience such a trivial manner of suffering is something quite beautiful, I think. And it makes the brutality of the crucifixion even more potent. Furthermore, being God, Jesus is a direct line of access to God and a closer relationship with our Father in Heaven. He is the sole mediator between God the Father and man. However, of course there are other mediators between us and Jesus, predominantly Mary, who is a very powerful intercessor indeed, and who we give a unique type of veneration to. But Jesus Christ has a unique filial divine relationship with the Father, and if we seek God the Father, all we need to do is seek Christ. We've established that Jesus Christ is true God and true man, without division or confusion. This is the mystery of the Incarnation. But what was and is the point of it, Why would God assume a human nature, along with temptation and suffering? Regardless if you're Christian in any shape or form or not, you might answer with the idea that Jesus became man to die for our sins. And you would be right, although the real meaning and impact of that can easily be lost and underappreciated. The very name Jesus means God saves in Hebrew, and Christ, derived from the Greek Christos, means the Anointed One. In Hebrew, the Messiah, the Saviour. In Jesus Christ, God reconciled the entire world to himself and redeemed us from the imprisonment of sin. 
On the cross, amidst great suffering, Christ bore the guilt of the world as a guiltless victim, perpetuating a perfect and ultimate sacrifice of love, so as to demonstrate his love for us and his desire for our sins to be forgiven. As Jesus is divine, that sacrifice had infinite value, and so it outweighs all of the harm and evil caused by our sin. Now, that doesn't mean that after the crucifixion and resurrection everyone became automatically saved from damnation. Our sins still carry great weight, and if someone refuses to let the grace of Christ's sacrifice be applied to their life, if they refuse to live out the teachings of Christ and his church, then the benefits of that grace are rejected. If you're hanging from a precipice, you know, as you do, and someone reaches down and offers their hand to pull you up, you have to reach for it yourself. You alone aren't able to pull yourself up, otherwise you wouldn't have been hanging there for so long already. We need to be the ones to accept that act of salvation. We need to be the ones to clasp that hand and cry, save me, with full confidence. In short, we need to put the work in ourselves. It's a two-way road. Just like last episode, there is so much more that could be said. Catholicism is an incredibly rich and beautiful religion, as would be expected of the one true church founded by Christ himself. We could talk about it endlessly, and many do. In this episode, though, I hope I've succeeded in presenting some of the especially important points about our Lord Jesus Christ. Not a philosopher, not a demigod, but true God and true man, our Saviour and our Redeemer. For those of you who are interested in dwelling on Christ's sacrifice more in your prayer life, I would highly recommend the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. It's a beautiful prayer that can be prayed using rosary beads, and it's rather simple. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, feel free to leave a comment or share it with a friend. If you'd like to contact us directly about this podcast, whether it be about Donna Nobis Pachem or another show, you can email us at uea.cafsockpodcast at gmail.com. If you feel there's anything we could improve on, please do offer suggestions through the aforementioned methods. Or, if you come across one of us on campus, you can always have a brief chat with us then. Even better, come to Mass on Sunday at 6pm. There'll be free food afterwards. What's not to like? Thank you for listening. God bless, and goodbye for now.